Uh, hi everyone and welcome back uh, to this series of electrical A1 BEO exam. This is about circuits and now we will have a question uh, about nodal analysis which is under the category of uh, DC analysis and this question is from basically December 2022. So this question is after the pandemic and I will try to solve in the coming few days, uh, some of those uh, questions uh, that appears in the exams after the pandemic. So that is a nodal uh, analysis question. Okay, so, and how do I know that? It says use node voltage method. So you have to use the this method to solve for the questions. Then you need to find basically V out, which is this voltage here and I delta. So what we do, Basically, first we choose one point or one node and we select it as the ground and the best node is the one that is connected to the negative of uh, the supply because this will allow us to uh, set uh, or to know the voltage in the other node as we will see here. So here the voltage V is equal to zero. Now this circuit and this circuit are not connected together. They're sharing the same ground but because there is no return path here, this circuit is independent of that circuit. Now here in this circuit, we will have one node. This is one node. And the voltage, I will call it basically V1. And this is the second node. And the voltage here is between this point to the ground, which is 80 volt. This is the beauty of selecting the negative as our reference, because with this, we will be able to uh, to find uh, the voltage at that specific node, okay? So obviously I wanna find V1. So KCL at V1. Now here when we apply nodal analysis, uh, we uh, represent the currents in terms of the node voltages, meaning that if I have a current going through between V1 and V2, and this is R, and if this is the direction of the current, this current is V1 minus V2 divided by R because we assume the current going from V1 to V2, it means that the current, or V1 has a higher potential, it's assumed to have a higher potential. So it's V1 minus V2. So we do that. So I assume the current here is leaving, the current here is leaving, the current here is leaving, and this current is uh, the current source. I have no control over that, so I'll keep it as it is. So we don't change or don't control the direction of the current source. Okay, so the current, this current is basically V1 minus zero divided by 200, plus this current is this voltage minus this voltage. So it is V1 minus. Now, what is this voltage? This is a voltage supply, is a, as a dependent voltage supply. And the voltage between this point to the ground is minus five I delta, because this is minus and this is a plus. So this is minus, minus five I delta. So it's a voltage source, divided by the voltage between, the, the resistors between them, which is 10 plus the current that goes to the right, so plus V1 minus 80 divided by 20. So these are one, two, three currents. We are left with the fourth current. Since this is entering the node, so this is, is equal to two, three. Now we need to uh, work a little bit in this equation. So we will multiply this equation by the least common denominator, which is 100, 200, so times 200. This becomes V1 plus 20 V1 plus 5I delta plus 10 V1 minus 80 equal to 600. So we will have V1, 20 V1, 10 V1. So we have 31 V1 plus 20 times 5, 100i delta, minus 800, so this will go to the 1,400, and this is my first equation. Now, this is one equation to unknowns, so I need to get rid of i delta, but i delta is the current that goes between V1 and 80, so i delta 
is equal to V1 minus 8,0 divided by 20. So we will substitute this equation 2. So I will substitute 2 in 1. So we will have 31 V1 plus 100 divided by plus 100 divided by 20 v1 minus 80 equal to 1400 so this it becomes 31 v1 plus 5 v1 minus 400 equal to 1400 so basically 36 v1 is equal to 1800 and from this, we found V1 is equal to 50 volt. So in node analysis, we need to find all node voltages. And this has happened now. So we know V1, this is 80, and this is 0. Now we can find our unknowns. So what is what are our unknowns? The first one is V0. Remember, that is the ground. And all of this is my V1. And this is 8, 0. Obviously, V1, which is the voltage between this node to the ground, is the same as V0. So your V0 is equal to V1 is equal to 50 volt. I delta is equal to V1, which is 50, minus 8, 0, the other voltage on the other side, divide by 20, which will give me minus 1.5 amps. So that is the, the, first, the first part. Second, it says calculate the current in each branch. Okay, so we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven branches. So we will calculate the current in each branch. So this branch is already 33 amps. So I don't need to worry about it. So I will call this is I1. So my I1 is equal to the voltage, which is 50 divided by the 200, which is give me 1 over 4 amp. Then I will have here my I, I2. So my I2 is equal to, okay, V1, which is 50 minus, now minus, Five and I delta is minus 1.5 divided by 10. And this will give me 4.25 amps. Okay. Then we have I3 here, which is I delta. So here we have in this branch, so I will, if I call this is I3. So my I3 is equal to my I delta that we already know, which is minus 1.5 amps. Then I will have, this is my I4. My I4 is a current source, a dependent current source equal to 40 I delta. And this will give me minus 60 amps. Then I will have here, now this current will come this way, so we'll have here I5 and I6. So my I5 current division equal to minus 60 times the other resistance divided by 10 plus 40, and this give me minus 12 amps. So if this is minus 60 amps, enters here minus 12 amps, so the current here will be I6 is equal to minus 40 amps, just KCL. So we found now the current in every single branch. Finally, it says show the magnitude of the total power generated equal to the total power absorbed. Now here I'd like to explain to you that how we decide if the power is absorbed of the power is basically uh, generated. So if I have an element, doesn't matter what is this element here, with this polarity, if the current enters the polarity, then basically this is absorbed. If 
the current leaves the polarity, then this is generated. So I will call this in the calculation A for short, and this is G for short. Okay, now all the resistors can only absorb. They cannot basically generate. So any resistor blindly, we will have them basically absorbing. The sources, they could absorb or they could basically generate. And as we know that there are some sources are chargeable. It's a battery, we charge it. So it, sometimes it absorbs, sometimes it can, it can generate. So we have to be careful with the polarity for our, uh, for our uh, uh, sources. Okay, now, these two circuits are independent from each other. The current here is confined in the, the right-hand uh, circuit, and the left-hand circuit, also the currents there are confined. So we need to check the power generated equal to the power absorbed for each of these two circuits. So let's start from the, uh, the circuit that is basically to the, to the right. Okay, so the circuit to the right here, so we have the current. Now we have this current as minus 60 amp. This is the current. And we have the current that goes here as basically minus, as we, we just calculate that current. This is minus 12. And this is basically minus 48. Now to avoid any confusion, I can reverse the current directions. And basically we will have the same, the same thing, but we change the sign. So basically this circuit alone, I can redraw it as such. I can keep the negative, but this is to avoid the confusion. So the current here will be 60 amp with this direction, okay? And we have here the two currents that we have. This current is basically both positive. This is 48 and this is 12 amp. Now we know that this is 40 ohm and this is 10 ohm. So the power of the 10 ohm is equal to the current, the 48 square times the 10. And this will give me 23,040. And this is basically absorbed resistance. The current or the uh, the other uh, resistance the p of the 40 ohm is equal to the 12 i square times the 40 and this will give me 5760 again it is absorbed now how about the current the current source now the polarity here becomes plus minus plus minus this is the passive convention when the current enter the resistance becomes plus minus and since the current is positive, okay, so this is plus minus. So the polarity of the supply here is plus and minus. Now, what is the voltage across the current source? Is the same the voltage across the two resistors. So the voltage across the 60 amp voltage source is uh, basically equal to, you can select either the 48 times 10 or the 12 times the 40, so it is, let's say, 48 times 10. This will give me 480 volt. So that is the voltage. Now, since the current is leaving the positive, it is generated. So the, the power of the 60 amp source is equal to 480 times the current, which is basically 60. And this will give me 28,000. 800, of course, everything is, this is what, this is what, this is what, and this is generated. Now, when you add this plus this, you will get this, which is what this is that, the, the power generated is equal to the total power absorbed, and this is for the right-hand side circuit. Now, let's move to the other circuit. Now, let's start from the current source. Okay. Now the voltage here is 50 volt. We know that the voltage here is 50 volt. The voltage here is 80 volt. This is ground. So the power of the 3 amp is the 50 times 3 is equal to 150 watt. 
and this is plus minus same polarity the current leaves the positive so this is basically generated now let's go for the 80 volt the other source the other independent source the p over the 80 volt supply okay now the current i delta is minus 1.5 it means the current actually going in that direction equal to 1.5. So the current leaves the positive and this is what make it generated. So the P at the 80 volt is equal to 80 times the 1.5 and this will give me 120 watt generated. Now let's see that the power of the last source which is the independent source sorry the dependent source this is 5i delta okay so let's look to that that branch only okay so this branch we have the 10 ohm now this i delta is negative so it's minus 1.5 okay so i will make it positive but i will reverse the polarity so this becomes plus minus okay and this equal to 7.5 volt now the current is going this is 50 volt we found the current in the 10 the 10 ohms the current in the 10 ohms i2 is 4.25 and is going in that direction okay so the current is going in this direction and this current is basically as i mentioned here is equal to 4.25 so this is 4 0.25 amps so the current enter the positive okay if the current enter the positive it means it is absorbed basic using this convention if the current enter the positive it means it is absorbed now one thing here very important to mention that when we apply this convention make sure that the current and the voltages are positive okay then you will have no confusion if they are not make them positive as i did here by for the current reverse the direction to make it positive and for the voltage reverse the polarity to make it positive so this will avoid any confusion like what i did here i reverse this polarity so that this will be positive so this is enter the positive using blindly the convention it becomes absorbed so the power of basically this source which is 5i delta is equal to 4.25 times the 7.5 and this uh, will give me 31.875 watt and this is basically absorbed now we are left one two three resistors so the power of the 200 ohm resistance is i square r okay so and i know i, I is 0.25 so this is 0.25 square times 200 this is already calculated from the previous step and this will give me 12.5 watt and this is absorbed the p of the 10 ohms is equal to the current which is the 4.25 square times the 10 and this will give me 180.625 watt again absorbed and finally the p of the 20 ohms and this is equal to the 1.5 or the minus 1.5 it doesn't really matter because we are squaring this times the 20 and we know that for all the resistors as i mentioned always it is absorbed and this will give me 45 watt absorbed now if you add the generated 150 plus 120 this is indeed equal to the 31.875 plus 12.5 plus 180.625 plus 45 and this equal to 270 watt the power that is generated is equal to the power that is basically absorbed and this is the end of this question